Hey, what's going on everybody? This your boy James from What's Your Forte. And I asked you guys on my Instagram as well as my YouTube three month ownership questions. What do you guys want to know? Put your questions down there and I answer them. So that's what today's video is going to be about. I'm going to be answering all you all your questions that you have on my G80M3. All right, let's get it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the YouTube questions first. I made a post on YouTube and you guys had some questions. So I'm going to go right straight down, you know, no particular order and go ahead and answer these questions. All right, so the first question I got here is things you miss about the F82. What elements from your F82 would you like to bring to the G80? All right, so to answer that question, um, the one thing that I probably do miss the most about my F82 is the sounds and noises it made. Um, granted, you know, this car doesn't have any that many mods to make any additional noises, which they are coming. Stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe so you can see those. Um, but the sounds that my F82 M4 made were great. Um, I do miss that. Um, I would say the only other thing that I probably did miss about the M4 uh, would probably be, I don't, I would say maybe the DCT only when on like wide open full throttle. So, um, driving around town, I don't miss the DCT whatsoever. Doing like regular driving, regular errands in the car, I do not miss the DCT. I rather have the ZF8. Um, when I'm like really getting after it, the DCT is just a little bit faster with the shifts. Um, and you get that full like engagement on every shift. You know, when you're hitting it, you feel like you're getting thrown back into your seat. Um, so that's probably the main thing that I do miss about my M4. Everything else, I'd rather have the G80 on everything else, man. Or, um, you know, if I had an M4, I'd rather have that. I'd rather have the newer version and everything else. But I would say the DCT precise shifts and aggressiveness, I do miss just a little bit, only when wide open throttle and really getting into it. Um, other than otherwise, I'll take the G80 any day. All right, next question. After living with the G80, do you still prefer four doors or you wish you had two doors? So, um, I will say in the G80 platform, the G8X platform, I think the M3 looks a lot better than the M4. So that's the reason why I went with the M3 and over the M4. Um, you know, two doors, four doors, no one really ever sits behind me that much anyway, if ever. So, you know, I have my seat all the way back. So, you know, four door if i had two doors that had the m4 it would be a little bit easier to get in and out um i don't necessarily have an issue with it now but you know having a longer door i can just kind of just fall in whereas this i kind of have to maneuver and then kind of get in um and i also like trying to so i'll go ahead and show you guys now we got the window rolling the window down and i'm trying to like hang my arm out the window as you can see my shoulders kind of hitting this b pillar right here on the M4, I didn't have that issue. You know, my B pillar, your pillar is way back there. So it was easier to just to hang my arm out the window whenever I just wanted to cruise, hang my arm out the window. It was a little bit easier on that. Um, but, you know, otherwise, I mean, I don't regret getting the M3 over the M4 because I just think the M3 looks a lot better with the wide hips and the aggressive stance that it has. Uh, I think the M4 is a little subdued in the G8X platform. So I don't really, um, I think, uh, I, you know, having the four doors is not really a set of problem. And then it's a car I actually can grow into. Start having a family, start having kids, stuff like that. I have a little room in the back. So it makes it a little easier. Next question. What next mod are you looking forward to the most? Dropping the car. I'm looking forward to putting the lowering springs on the car. Um, I ended up going with a different spring. That video is going to be coming real soon. Um, so you guys got to subscribe and stay tuned for that. But I, um, I had the H&Rs, as a lot of you guys know. They're actually for sale, so if anyone wants to buy the H&Rs off of me, hit me up. But I got went with a different setup, a different suspension setup than the H&Rs. Um, you guys got to stay tuned. Got to stay tuned for that. So that's what I'm looking forward to the most is dropping the car. Next question. Would you have wished to have X-Drive? Maybe the next one. Fuel range compared to the F82. Top five options, top five plus or minus. And he asked a lot of questions in there, so I'm going to try to get to them pretty quick. Um... Did I wish I had the X Drive? <clears throat> no. The X Drive is going to look nice on paper. You know, the post is 0 to 60 times. I will say this. It depends on what kind of driver you are. If you're in an inclement climate, I can understand X Drive. Here, I'm in North Carolina. We don't really, it may, it may snow once a year, if that. It doesn't snow much here. We don't get much ice and stuff like that. So I don't need X Drive for that. Um, I don't dig race. You know, uh, that's one thing I've never done. Don't plan on doing it. Have no interest in doing dig races um and i don't 
I may take my car to the drag strip just for fun one day. Um, but I'll have adequate tires at that point if I do plan to do that. But that's not like drag racing and dig racing is not something that really interests me a lot. I'd rather take my car to the track or do, you know, 40, 50, 60 rolls is more my style. So that's the reason why the rear wheel drive fits my style. But I think it really just depends on what you want the car to do, uh, whether you want X drive or not. And I don't regret not getting X drive. I know a lot of people have been seeing a lot of the zero 60 times popping off and they look, they're very great. And the car is going to be extremely fast from a dig. Um, I, I would like to see once people, once they get out, people race like from a roll too. Cause I think the rear wheel drive one is going to be faster from a roll. X drive is going to be faster from a dig. So we'll see once all the numbers and once people start getting them out and they start really tinkering with them and racing them, we'll see which one's faster. So, all right. So his next question was maybe the next one, I guess he was saying, stating that maybe will I get X drive next time? I don't think so. Um, unless they can just prove it's faster all the way around, but it's still to the way I drive my car and the way I like my car to feel, I still think rear wheel drive would be for me. Um, fuel range compared to the F82. This car seems to be a little bit better on gas, but it may be because of the 8-speed ZF versus the 7-speed DCT. On the trip up in New Jersey uh, for the Keys Motorsports Show, I averaged for the whole trip, including the city driving and stuff we did, 26 miles per gallon. Um, and that's without a tune or anything like that. This, you know, this car was stock. I wasn't running race chips, so that's just regular. I say 90% of that was probably highway driving. But that's just what I average, 26 miles a gallon, which is great. This car's only rated, I think, at 24. So for me to get 26 round trip was great. I'll take that any day. All right. And then he said top five options, top five plus or minus. I already did a top five video. Um, I'll link that below. Go check that out. I did a top five options on this car already. So those are going to kind of be my top five options at this point. So that's kind of going to answer that question. All right, next question. Would you spec the car any differently after living with it for a while? Any options you wish you would have got um, that you wish you use, don't use, etc. Would I get the same color scheme, etc. Would I build a car the same? So the only option that sometimes I wish I kind of had was a heads-up display. Um, I didn't get the heads-up display because in that option package, that was the only thing that I really wanted. Um, and I didn't want to spend another three, four grand and have a bunch of stuff that I wasn't going to use besides a heads-up display. Um, I knew the car had a digital uh, readout and the speedo up here, so I was fine with that. That's the only thing I kind of miss. The only thing I wish maybe I could have optioned out. Um, I got the laser lights. Um, I have, you know, it's got Apple CarPlay and all that stuff standing there. I got a backup camera. I don't need the 360 camera. I had the executive package on my M4 with a 360 camera and all that. And I never used the front fender um, cameras. They just really didn't help me out that much. And I've driven cars with a 360 camera, the new upgraded one. You know, it's a nice feature to show off to people, but I just need a backup camera. That's all I really need. I don't need a front-facing camera. I don't need cameras on the side and all that stuff. You know, I've been driving without that for years. I don't really think I necessarily need it. Um, so I really wouldn't spec the car any differently as far as that's concerned. So color scheme, if I had to choose another color besides Brooklyn Gray, it probably would have been Dravit Gray. Dravit Gray looks great or Porto Mayo Blue. Those are my other two colors that I was considering. Um, so maybe if I had to get a chance where I get to spec another one, I wouldn't choose Brooklyn Gray again because, of course, I already had it. I probably would choose between Drive It Gray or Porto Milo Blue. The Porto, both of those colors are very beautiful, um, and I love these seats. I think I'll definitely get these seats again. All right, next question. Are you going to change the exhaust down pipes, get burble or crackle sound? So, um, definitely going to do some exhaust work. I think this car is a little, it's a little quiet. Um, I've, heard, I've heard the car online with just down pipes. I think it sounds great. Um, maybe do down pipes and an axle back. Maybe leave the resonator, secondary cat. Um, you know, I've seen my. Uh, I got a buddy Von B, who actually has a YouTube channel. Go go support him. But he did an actual single, like the dual comes straight from the down pipe into a single all the way back to the axle back, um, and that sounds great. Um, his exhaust sound sounds very very good. So. Uh, maybe something like that. Definitely going to get down pipes because I want to maximize my power. All that stuff is definitely coming. Um, so I will be getting that. As soon as these tunes come out, speaking of tunes, there's been a lot of st stuff going on. What The car is tunable. It's not tunable. Uh, they have to, so right now, what are all the manufacturers are doing, I know you may have seen a lot of stuff getting posted. They have, to, they have to take your ECU out and ship it to Germany, and they do a flash. So I'm not interested in that. So I'm going to wait until I can get some OBD options from BM3 or MHD. I'm gonna wait on those options. 
Um, I'm not. I don't feel comfortable shipping my ECU out overseas and made if it gets lost or anything like that. So that's not something that I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna wait till there's a more convenient option available. All right. So this next question is: Can you adjust the temperature setting separately for driver and passenger? Yes, you can. So right here, this is the driver side temperature, and this is the passenger side temperature. So they do not have to be the same, um, and you can adjust them separately. So that's how you would do it there by using that button for the driver side and this button for the passenger side. All right, next question. Average fuel economy, hints and tips you found after using a while. Average fuel economy right now. Um, actually, let's see what the car says. It says right now, my average fuel economy right now is 22.9 miles per gallon. Um, and that's me driving the way I drive, you know, city and everything right now since 722 i've been averaging tw pretty much 23 miles per gallon so that's pretty good i think that's pretty good i'll take that i'll take that any day of the week um any hints and tips you found after driving the car using it for a while not necessarily i did talk about those features in my fi top five feature video some of the stuff that i found and found out about the car i thought it was unique um nothing else outside of that so far i mean i've had a couple bmws kind of already knew what to expect um, you know, and I did talk about in the top five video um, things that I didn't know this car had. So definitely go check out that video for that information. Next question: How was the break-in period? Were you able to drive in Sport M mode during the break-in period, or was it limited? Um, so the break-in period, I did a video talking about that as well. They try to change all the fluids. Um, they check everything. They change all the fluids. Make sure everything's where it needs to be. Um, to give the car just a once over to make sure everything's good um you are able to drive the car pre-break-in as hard as you want they recommend you keeping it under 5k on the rpm don't go over 100 miles an hour is what i was told um but i've seen people just disregard that and you can drive the car the car doesn't limit you in any way i will say it felt like after the break-in the car felt a little more aggressive but that could just been me just tripping <laughs> to be honest um so I don't know if that's if that was you know a placebo effect because I was excited because I did the break-in period or it was actually something in the break-in period that actually unleashed and something. Um, you're able you can drive the car in any mode you want. They just recommend you staying below 5k on the RPM and staying under 100 miles per hour. Next question: How much different is it from the F80 in exhaust sound, power, and handling? I would say this car, as far as handling, this car outhandles the F80, um, F82 all day long. This car is a beast. The way it puts power down, the way you get the grip, it's they work some magic in this car, man. Um, it just outhandles the, that previous gen all day long. Um, as far as exhaust, uh, I think stock, this car sounds better than the F80, F82. F80, F82 had that lawnmower sound when you crunk it up. This car doesn't have that. has a little bit more of a deeper grumble. I have seen once people start throwing exhaust on it, that raspy sound that a lot of people didn't like does come back a little bit. Um, this car supposedly has equal length exhaust from the factory, um, but I think there's still some raspiness in the car, which I don't mind too much. Um, but I think this car sounds better, definitely handles better. Power stock for stock. This car is way more, it's faster than the previous car. Uh, maybe not from a dig. Well, I would say from a dig. I think this car puts down power a lot better. Launch control is a lot more usable in this car than it is in the F82. So this car is definitely faster and handles better. And I think it sounds better. Uh, next question, did you ever get the steering problem fixed? Got a video on that. It may have already been out. I'm not sure which video I'm going to drop first, but there's a video coming on that. So look at that one. <laughs> Um, what was the difference between pre-break-in and post-break-in? They really just changed the fluids. Um, I kind of spoke about this in a previous question. The car did feel more livelier, but maybe it was just me and my, it was a mental thing because I'm not limiting myself to 5K and I was really just driving the car the way I wanted to drive it. But I did feel like I, did feel like I felt a difference. Um, wish you had waited for X-Drive. No, I don't dig race. I mean, it'd be cool to get some numbers you know, do some 0 to 60 times and post them on draggy, stuff like that. But, nah, I'm good with rear-wheel drive. Is it worth tuning the car with a piggyback? I would say if you want a solution where you just put it on the car and let it go, if you if you just can't wait for a tune, yes, I think it's worth it. Um, you know, I did a video on the dyno. I did a dyno video on the power that I got from the race chip. I did add a significant amount of power. So, I definitely, it does add power. It does, you know, give you 
more speed if that's what you're looking for if you don't want to wait you think the car you just want a little more power um i think it's worth it you know um it just really depends on i would say that just assess your needs assess your tolerance because you know if they really want to and dig into it they can notice that something was attached to the car and if your engine blows up you take it back if they really want to dig into it they probably can see that a piggyback was on the car and they may try to void your warranty or may say they're not going to cover it so just just assess your tolerance and take it from there next question what is your average fuel economy what are the minor annoyances that you think should have been in the car in this price range do you wish for the same money you have gotten something else longest drive you've done in the car non-stop are the seats truly comfortable anything you wish you had spec such as auto cruise control how's the sound system maybe some night driving footage I love the cabin footage on night drive, seeing the ambient light. Lastly, how badass do you feel driving this thing? <laughs> so a lot of questions in there, so I'm gonna try to go back through and answer them pretty quick. What is the average fuel economy? I already talked about that right now. Since 722, I've been averaging 23 miles per gallon, which I think is really good. And that's a mix of city and highway. Um, any annoyances? Um, I would say for me being a bigger guy, sometimes I rub on this B pillar a little bit with my shoulder i have broad shoulders you know i work out and stuff so um i would say that's somewhat sometimes a little annoyance it doesn't really know me on short drives when i did the drive up the uh new jersey for the keys motorsport show i you know i kind of had to make sure i was adjusting back and forth you know so the next part he said was do you think there's what 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 do i think should be in the car for a car in this price range um i think this car is pretty well equipped I will say one complaint I've seen from people, they stated that this car inside reminds them too much of like the M340. There's not enough stuff in the car that makes it special. Um, you know, I got the carbon interior package, so I think it looks special to me. Um, it's, it's a different type of shifter, stuff like that. So it looks, it feels different to me. Um, but maybe if you didn't get that, maybe you feel like the inside isn't as special as you may like it if you didn't equip the carbon package. But I feel like the inside of this car, especially with the different gauges and stuff you get with the M um, versus the M340, makes it a little more special. Um, so I don't. I think the car for the price um, is pretty well equipped. I think like some things like the wireless charging pad. I think the car, every car should come stock with a heads-up display. I don't think it should be an option. I think any car in this price range should come stock with a heads-up display. I think the laser lights should be standard. I know some cars aren't getting laser light. I feel like the laser light should be standard, heads up display should be standard, and wireless charging pads should be standard on every model, even the base models. If you're paying this much for this car, that stuff should be included. You shouldn't have to option out the car to get those things. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, for the same money, I wish I'd have gotten anything else. Right now, no. I was looking at an F90 M5 used 2017. There was one in the same price range of this car. Um, that would have been a little bit more money per month because the interest rate on used cars is a lot higher than it is on the new car. Um, so that kind of was a deciding factor in me choosing the G80 over the F90 M5. That and the way when I drove this thing, it felt, it just feels a lot better than driving the M5. The M5 is a lot bigger car, a lot heavier, a um, lot more weight to tug around. Uh, longest drive, car non-stop. Um, the seats are truly comfortable. These are way more comfortable than my F82 M4 seats on any seats in the F8X. These seats are a lot more comfortable and they are ventilated. If you option this car, get the ventilated seats, you will love them. I love them on a long drive. It definitely um, assisted during my drive. Um, the longest drive I did was up to New Jersey. Um, I think the longest we drove without stopping may have been like four or five hours. I didn't have any issues. I'm a big guy in this car and I didn't have any issues. So most people aren't going to run into any issues at all. Um, anything I wish I spec'd. Um, I kind of talked about this in another one. I wish kind of maybe I would have got the heads up display. But other than that, I like the way I spec the car. Um, how's the sound system? I did a video on my sound settings. Definitely go check that out. But it definitely did need some tweaking from the factory. It's trash, uh, to be honest. Um, but once I added my settings in there, it does makes it sound a whole lot better. So definitely go check out my video on the sound settings. Um, then he talks about some night drive footage, ambient lighting, stuff like that. I do plan on doing some night driving footage. Um, I just got to go do it. So definitely thanks for giving me that idea. I will definitely get some night driving footage up as well. All right. And the last question on YouTube is if you like or like if you or hmm, try to read this question. Give me a second. 
Okay, basically asking automatic or DCT. I kind of done a video on this as well. Um, I'm choosing the ZF8 95% of the time. Um, the DCT, I only I would only take the DCT over this if I was doing all out floor pedal to the metal, just going to get it full out speed, and I want the quickest, precisest shifts ever. Um, I, th I do think DCT shifts just a little bit, just a hair faster than this, but 95% of the time, I'm going to take the ZF8 over the DCT. So that's all the questions that was under my YouTube post. Thank you for everyone that actually submitted a question, and I hope I answered it correctly. So let me go ahead. I had a couple other um, questions that was asked on my Instagram, so I'm going to get to those right now. So going through my Instagram messages, I have a couple here. So the, one of the first questions was, um, do I regret not getting the carbon fiber pack? I guess he's talking about the exterior pack. Um, no, because I have, I got a carbon sponsor that I'm working with. I'm not going to disclose the name yet, but uh, we're working together. So I'm got some stuff I'm going to be dropping here very, very soon. I actually may have some stuff already on the way. <laughs> so got to stay tuned. So um, I kind of figured that I was going to get be able to get a... A sponsorship or be able to work with a carbon um, company and that's the reason why I didn't get the carbon exterior package I think I want to bring y'all that content in case you want to buy in case you want to not get it yourself and then you know buy aftermarket I think the aftermarket carbon is gonna be fine so that's the reason why I didn't option it all right so I went through some of the other messages I got on Instagram and all of them were already answered or the same questions that I got before so any of you guys that may have submitted those Instagram questions I probably already answered them Oh, I definitely did already answer them in the questions that I had before. So thank you to everyone that submitted a question. I hope I answered everything. I think I got through everything. If there was a question that you had that I did not answer, please put it in the comments down below. This was fun. I may do another one of these after I do some mods and maybe down the road, man. But so far, three months ownership has been great. Um, and I don't regret buying the car one bit. Um, the steering issue was a little bit of a headache, but I think we got it sorted out now. So... Um, yeah, man. I mean, I don't regret the car. I still get a lot of looks. I get people stopping me all the time, you know, saying they love the car, love the way it looks, love the color combination. I get a lot of compliments at car shows of the of the Brooklyn gray with the orange. Um, I took an option. I took a chance, rolled the dice on that, but I think it really worked out. So, um, again, thanks for everyone for all your support so far. Almost at 5K, man. So getting close to 5K. At 5K, I may even, I'm planning on doing a giveaway. More details on that coming soon, man. So definitely like subscribe if you haven't already and um that's it man that's gonna be today's video if there's anything you want to see please comment down below let me know and i'll get to it all right so i'll let y'all later peace